Hi, thanks for watching. If you like these videos, please subscribe down below. If there's anything I don't cover on them that you're curious about, or if I mess up anywhere on them, please leave a comment and I'll address it. One of the things I noticed post-edit on this is that the new platform that I created for this doesn't actually work right with this stepper motor. Uh, I might have to replace this with a servo. I've got some more of these on order to see if it's a problem with this stepper motor in particular, or if it's a problem with the gearing. I ordered up some 12 volt and some 5 volt to play around with and see if see if there's any difference there or if it's just an internal gearing issue and these things just tend to wobble a lot because they're not really made for any kind of application aside from opening a louver on a AC vent. So I'll be seeing that later and I'll probably release a follow-up to address that and possibly an adaption for this so it, it can run a RC servo instead of a stepper motor if it's necessary. It should still all roughly work with the same setup, possibly a new uh, different driver or just straight voltage or what have you for the servo motor, but it shouldn't be too much of an adaptation for it. And I can just put a switch in the code so it can handle either if that's the case. All right, on with the show. Hi, and welcome back to the workbench. Today I'm working on a scanner table, or actually, in my case, it's just a rotary turntable that I'm going to be using to rotate a platform around on and then take pictures of things because I need to do some moving shots of some of the uh, 3D prints so that you get an idea of what the quality was like on the printout so I don't have to slowly pan it or, you know, do a do for your job with that. So this is the PETG I've been looking at, the cheapest PETG I could find on Amazon, and as you can see, it actually prints out rather well. I was having some trouble with the lowering movements and retracts, but that's not odd for PETG. So all in all, works really well. I'll be doing some videos on that, happy with it. This was the Pretty in Pink P PLA. It, uh, it actually works great. This came out fine, but there were some problems with the design when I was working on this. So what I ran into was that the table actually flexes quite a bit on this. Not the table, but the base. As you can see, notice that flexing up and down. So what that'll do is it'll throw the bearings off so that the tray doesn't sit on them flush. I redesigned it with a slightly thicker baseline on there, but still had the same problems on it. And then I got tired of trying to fix it with small changes, so I just added huge... Uh, some huge supports in between the center and each one of those to hold them in and provide some structural support and that actually works fine. So I'm going to get this built. This is actually a design that I used off Thingiverse. It was uh, designed by somebody else, Bob M, I believe. But for our purposes, I had to actually redesign the entire thing so I could change it to be this and sketch up and add a grub screw on the bottom of the tray so that it would let you get some uh, positive reinforcement to hold the tray onto the motor just so it'll stick in place and won't shift slightly while you're printing. Not that it matters that much, honestly, that if you're printing, if you're spinning anything that's heavier, it'll, it'll hold in place just fine. But I just wanted to make sure that'd be the case. I believe these were the bearings that I cleaned out and re-lubricated as well. So these are still still spinning okay freely with, I believe, PT, PTFE. So, yep, those are working fine still. Put this one aside. I also wrote up some custom software for the Arduino controller on this. Uh, I just had to completely re-implement it for a rotating tray instead of for the picture taking device it was originally made for. So now it just asks you the number of rotations and then it'll rotate around. I'll show you as soon as I as soon as I actually get this put back together. The other interesting thing to note is that you shouldn't power these little uh, 28BYJ-48 5 volt DC steppers directly from an Arduino. What I noticed with the Arduino Pro Mini Mini Pro whichever one this is Anyway, the Arduino I was using, it only sports up to 300 milliamps on the line. And this draws 
over 300 milliamps, even if just over, it's the 340 or 350 or so. So what was happening is it was drawing too much, the display was having trouble running, and um, and the, the, the total draw on here is going to be tough on it. If you're drawing for this, uh, which will be 300 something, just over 300, and then if you're drawing for one of these as well, which is another, I think, 40 milliamps, and then whatever the power draw is on, it, it just ends up being slightly too much for the for the device. So, so you probably want to provide it its own 5.2 volt power supply. I've got it hooked up to my I've got it hooked up to my bench supply that you can see in the background there. It's just an inexpensive uh, three amp unit, I believe. And that works great. It, it provides enough power for testing on this. And once I get done, I'll go ahead and hook up either a 7.2 volt, step it down to 5.2, uh, nominal 7.2 volt lithium ion pack, or I'll just build up a five volt package for it um, with rechargeable uh, Nizin or nickel metal hydride batteries. And that'll provide it with, with enough juice to run on, which would probably be 6.2. Uh, 6, 6 so it might be a little high in the voltage because it'd probably be 6.2 volt fully charged nickel metal hydrides, which would be a uh, five pack. Yeah, five pack, which would give nominal six volt. So that would work pretty well if you use the nickel metal hydrides and they're, they're inexpensive. Uh, I think uh, the generic ones I got, which worked fine last time I paid I don't know, $10 for the package, $4? No, $4 I think for the package of triple A's. So you might want to use AA's for a project like that just so you have more, more impacity, but whatever. Anything will work fine. It doesn't draw that much. It's 400 milliamp at full draw running and I think uh, 40 milliamp when it's running in the background. All right, let me get this set up and let's take a look at it. Ah, so there's still actually a problem with this design. That is 6.39 millimeter deep. The standoff on this is a little under. Let's see. Six point one six. Hmm, how to fix that. So the problem I'm having is that the tray with these new 6, 608ZZ bearings that I'm using, the tray isn't quite, and you can see this, sitting on the bearings. Let me put some weight on that. Let's see what happens. I might actually... No. No. I don't like that. So there's two ways I can solve that. Either, let's see what the difference looks like. This may require some more printing. So, as you can see, it's not quite matching. It's not quite hitting the bearings. And that's gonna be a problem. What I'd like it to do is rest completely on the bearings and then only slightly contact the top, uh, well not contact the top of this at all, but uh, rest on the bearings and then this will just be used to spin it around so that it's not resting any weight on the motor. Hmm. That's going to be a problem. So what I can do is rework this so that it's got a ring around it here uh, so that it'll make better contact with the bearings. Yeah, that's going to be too wobbly. So 
I'm gonna go redesign this. I'm gonna add a, a race to the outside of it, just a raised area so that it'll sit more evenly on these. And I think that should fix the problem. In any case, let me put it, finish putting it together and showing you how it works because I can always add a race and go reprint this in a little bit. Also, another interesting thing I added on here was a little bit of cable management so that the uh, cables would have somewhere to rest when they're going out of there and help guide them out of the out of the path of the motor and the table. Might also want to add some over here, but I'll see if I can do that in a, another edit. Maybe in a future revision. But for now, let's see how it works. I'll just lightly rest that on there for now. All right, and it just asks you for the number of rotations. You can switch it up to any number up to 99, I believe. And then once you've selected your rotation number, you hit the enter key. And it rotates, like so. And it'll do whatever number of rotations that you selected. I don't have it counting down yet. I'll probably add that in at some point. But I just wanted to keep it simple and actually make it work first. What I ended up using for electronics on this was uh, a copy of what they used for the original, what the original developer used for his scanning table. Although it's been reprogrammed, it's still a 1602 LCD. A 16 character two row LCD uh, yeah, an Arduino Which is pretty well used in this case I'm making use of most of the most of the pins the ULN 2003 I believe stepper driver ULN 2003 yep AP. And that's a nice little stepper driver for driving these it might actually work better if you have a stepper that's fancier. I'm not sure. I didn't go and experiment with them at all. I just put this on there and, and checked it out. Also, it drives between 5 and 12. Possibly driving it at 12 volts would be quieter or something. I, I don't know. I didn't have a chance to experiment with that at all. It's got a potentiometer for adjusting the brightness of the screen because these screens are a bit finicky. Unfortunately, my screen has uh, the resistors set up for... A different potentiometer it's probably a 1k for this in particular and I put a 10k pot on because that's just what it had on the bill of materials unfortunately it means it's just at the end of the range it's just a little fiddle to get it back and forth but once it's running it's actually okay for the most part on any given supply voltage it changes a little bit with the supply so it's also got three buttons uh, SPSTs momentary push switches single pull single throw yeah so momentary push switches, which work for going up and down on the menu, and then that one hits enter. I may add some more menu options on here too, so that it'll have options for, say, speed. And uh, probably just speed, possibly acceleration, although I'm not sure how useful that'll be for the application. It also has some LEDs, which I'm currently not using. I pro will probably add some code in to light up the LEDs while it's running. And that's pretty much it. This was just a soldered board that I had soldered up to, uh, as you can see. I am going to pot in the back with some hot glue just to keep it all from making contact with anything electrical, but aside from that, it's pretty well done as a prototype. And that's it. Can't think of anything else on this build. So it works well. I'm pretty happy with it. I'll post the code below, so if anybody wants to reproduce that or make something similar or build on it, please do. I'll also put up the STL files. They're already over on Thingiverse, GitHub, and Prusa, but I'll put up the updates for this one. And uh, I'll come up with a diff slightly different tray design for this so it'll properly sit on the bearings instead of resting on the motor. 
That'll probably make it a little less noisy. It'll also mean that the motor's not taking all the weight. And there's the design. Hopefully you can build something off it. Thanks for watching. See you next time.